like reading quotes from you <laughs> back to you. Uh, thanks for coming on. How do we know this all just an, some just giant short covering head fake in a downtrend? Always possible. You got to look at the weight of the evidence. You know, again, the key reversal day, that's when you have uh, big opening losses that get reversed into the close. That is an indication of downside exhaustion. And it's not just that reversal alone, but what's adding to is its efficacy are four things. You know, one, where it occurred. It occurred, it occurred at a very important level, 3,500 on the S&P 500. That's the 50% retracement of the prior bull market, which is where the majority of bear cycles through hi history have been limited to. Uh, point two, it occurred with very deeply oversold market cycle indicators, breadth and sentiment levels on par with what we saw in even March of 2009, levels that have been followed by above average returns. Point three occurred with indications of downside uh, selling intensity that was abating versus where we were in, in June. Typically, that type of divergence uh, occurs at a reversal point. And all this, the final point occurring with the emergence of bullish seasonal. So it's, this is textbook criteria, Brian. Uh, this is why we see an opportunity for the long-term investor. Uh, the missing piece, of course, can, is, is interest rates, which has really driven this sell-off. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see that 10-year yield lower. So there is that lingering concern for, from a near-term basis. But for the long-term investor, we see this as opportunity. Where's the confirmation signs? What do we need to see? Well, let's start with the 10-year yield. Uh, watching 3.5%. That was the June peak. So if you fall below the June peak, that's an indication of a failed breakout and exhaustion there in the rate market as well. Uh, and on the upside for the S&P, we can consider this counter trend while you're below the 200-day, but you start to move above that 200-day average, and a lot of long-term trend signals are going to flip positive, and all of a sudden you have the emergence of a new bull market. What would be a sign of failure? And I mean, aside from stocks going back down, of course. Right. So, you know, listen, uh, there's always the tail risk scenario. And, and for perhaps you want to if, if you're worried about you can't be in and out, uh, you want to wait for the lagging confirmation, the base and turn. Uh, but even just from a trading basis, keep an eye on the June low. It's around thirty six, thirty seven. We're back above there today. We fell below it Friday. As long as we're above it, you have the setup for a failed breakdown yep. below the June low. But what you're going to be looking for, Brian, really, is it's not just so the, the level on the downside, but if we start to see selling intensity pick back up and a surge in new lows again, that would have to restart the whole bottoming process. All right, it's Monday. Let's, let's be in a good mood. Leave us with some opportunity here. Chipotle, CMG, what's on the chart that makes this look attractive to you? Yeah, well, so the case for us is that the breadth of stocks at the least have lightly uh, bottomed here, if not the stock market. We are seeing improvements in breadth. A lot of consumer names like Chipotle, names that broke out during that summer rally, that reversed their decline. And while the market was sliding in the third quarter, it developed more as a consolidation within a reversal for a name like Chipotle, which is back to the 200-day average. It's a name also covered at the firm with an outperform rating. Our analyst, Brian Bittner, likes it as a top idea. Uh, we call it an opco trifecta. It sets up well. We think that reversal's intact. And this is a, a great name to play what we think is a market recovery.